Oh, hello. Um, hello, my name is Sam, not, and uh, I made a joke for us. Where do crazy people do their shopping? In Sainsbury's. Funny, eh? No. Anyway, I'm a bit mental, like you probably are, and I'm worried about the state of our world. And sometimes these things, my mental state and the environmental crisis, for example, seem rather intimately related. I won't say more than that. Very likely you know the score anyway. What I want to do is try to freakishly entertain you for a few minutes by reading you a story which might give you some things to think about, whether you're a straight or bendy, spiral or square, whether you're here or if you were there. Every little helps, as the, say, as the old saying goes. Oh, fucking hell. So here is a little story I wrote some time back called The Unhappy Customer. Good afternoon. I'm sorry to disturb you, but on my way out of Insanesbury's this morning, I saw something new. Outside the revolving doors was a small gazebo branded Psychological Support Tent. There was a supermarket employee inside, sitting on a white plastic chair beside a white plastic sun lounger. I heard a strange wailing sound like a police siren. I became aware that the noise belonged to a middle-class housewife struggling towards us, two bulging shopping bags in each hand, face strained, red and contorted like a wet gargoyle. She seemed completely consumed with grief and made to continue on past the tent, but the employee stood up, softly put a hand on each shoulder and deftly, deftly manipulated the lady into lying down on the sun lounger. The wailing noise spluttered to a stop and there was a moment's silence in which the unhappy customer stared vacantly up at the roof of the tent. She then seemed to regain a little self-awareness, searching the area with her eyes, before settling on the concerned face of the supermarket counsellor. I shall attempt to convey something of their exchange. <coughs> Counselor. Dear valued customer, would you like to talk about your experience in store today? Customer. It's ridiculous. I don't understand. I've always managed fine before. Why was this time any different? I knew at the moment I walked in being funnelled through the discounted goods section. Normally it makes me mindlessly happy. I give myself free reign to be enticed by every offer. I get such quiet thrills buying things I don't really need. Even though I'm spending, I feel like I'm saving. But not today. It was as if every stupid thing was screaming at me. What have you made of me? Why am I a small fluorescent spade? What is the point of a hundred plastic plates? I worried that I had suffered some kind of aneurysm. I suddenly couldn't see the point in any of the products. Even worse, I had this creepy paranoia, an almost pagan feeling, that all these items were made from some sacred, holy substance that I had allowed to be stolen and profaned. I was overwhelmingly sad, so I pushed on through, thinking perhaps if I put some sweet treats in my trolley I'd feel a little better. But, oh, great woe, it was a full-scale psychological assault, a sickening offensive, all these bright plastic covered lumps of blended fat and sugar, all asking me to eat them. Nay, demanding! And inside each, each thin, filmy product of the great mother's blood. What did I just say? Mother's blood? Mm. 
At this point she was sick in her mouth, rigidly holding her hamster cheeks in some kind of shock. But the counsellor soothed her expertly, stroking the back of her head while putting her fingers round her jaw and massaging a little. The tension seemed to leave her dear housewife all of a sudden, the bile spilling out over her quivering chin, wiped quickly away alongside any sense of loss of dignity. Plastic, plastic, plastic. There was plastic inside plastic. I mean, rationally, I still knew that we needed things divided up into little tidy portions, that a bag of toffees would soon become a single hideous, sugary lump in my throat. Shit! Shit! Shit out! Shit it out! Shut up! Shut up! Shut it up! Strokes. And then the meat section. It was too much. There were carcasses on display. Some of the packaged meat pieces were recognisably human. I saw rib cages. Rib cages. Rivers of blood. Sadness and shit. Murder. 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 And I'm supposed to eat it. To feed it to my children. It wasn't the idea of death. I can bear that. I grew up on a farm. we have skinned rabbits. I know the natural world works through eating and being eaten. I'm okay. She halted suddenly. Her eyes widened and her voice boomed strangely. Love what you kill. Consume what you love. Death is below and death is above. She sat quietly for a moment as if trying to process her own weird utterance, then continued on as if nothing had happened. I'm, I'm okay with death, but not with factories of it, not with slaughterhouses of horror, murder on a mass scale, fat people, lots of fat people, not humans, slugs, sweaty slugs. Living dust to dust bins, consuming sadness, plump from the accumulated half-lives of beings raised in human-made hells. Creatures engineered to survive just long enough to die, knowing only prison, death, the polystyrene boxes of boredom, and then shit, shit that goes where? Shit that seems to just disappear when the button is pressed. Shit that swims like fish in the oceans of our ignorance. She screamed this last, just as a young lady walked past with a selection of children in her trolley. Looking for all the world as if she had just purchased a family. The young lady paused a moment, but kept her eyes fixed ahead seemingly too stunned to search out the source of this strange announcement. And then she set off at double speed. Yogurts, cheese, and gallons of milk. I see humanity as a perverse beehive. At the center is a huge titty. It is poking through a tear in dimensions. There are little workermen going up these coral-like accretions. They pause just before them, cautiously extend a finger. And the moment they make contact, whoosh, the things disappear. There is only empty space and a small, slow fall of snow-like dust. A white tear comes sluggish out the teat, for all the world like an egg from an anus. And the billion creatures descend upon it with tongues like bayonets, stabbing each other, stabbing each other. You're stabbing and sucking. <laughs> she begins to sob, at first softly, but soon her whole body is heaving and the counsellor takes her in her arms, stroking her head while the unhappy customer cries into the uniformed bosom. The counsellor looks at me for the first time. I am transfixed. She rolls her eyes and mimics a yawn, then winks. 
I feel somehow abused, as if some slivering devil just rubbed their sex raw across my face. I begin to sweat. My stomach requests permission to leave. I cannot grant it. I must stand here and hold myself together. The counsellor begins to speak. You are having a stress reaction. Perhaps you've been consuming too much alternative media. Or it could be that one of your children is experimenting with thinking for themselves. I have to say, while the intentions behind such endeavours may sometimes prove honourable, they often only confuse people and end up wreaking havoc. The world is simply too complicated for us to em uh, attempt to understand it ourselves. These things are best left to the professionals. The counsellor waits until Our Lady begins to nod. <coughs> and so I have some very practical advice that will enable you to complete your weekly shop without experiencing such emotional turmoil. When you are at home, preferably alone in the haven of your kitchen, do a full stock check and write out everything you need in a tidy and clearly punctuated list. Then, when you arrive at in Sainsbury's, take out the list and affix it to the small clipboard that we attach to our trolleys. Now, try to imagine that you are a robot. You are a machine. Your brain is a computer. Every time you find yourself thinking about something, return your attention to the list. Your only task is to find the next object and put it in your trolley. This is the entirety of your duty. Nothing is so fulfilling as completing your duty. There is no feeling of freedom like succeeding in the tasks you have set for yourself. You are a shopping machine, a simple and effective domestic robot. You need not stray from the list. You are completely fulfilled in completion of these objectives. The unhappy customer has been staring straight ahead, a glazed look in her eyes. As if every ounce of energy has been drained from her, after receiving the advice, she slowly turns to meet the unwavering gaze of the supermarket counsellor. They stare at each other in silence for all of three slow breaths. I see our customer break a smile. Thank you, you've been very helpful. There are two dark patches on the breasts of the counsellor, formed from tears. They hold my gaze like an amorphous pair of shadow eyes. I feel the warm, comfortable wetness of myself spreading throughout my trousers. I have forgotten why I am here. I no longer know where here is. I see a kind face coming towards me. I know only that she will help me. Help. 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 <laughs>